and welcome to another episode of the Not For Nothing podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and I am joined with my bestie in the Westie. I'm Natasha. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm hanging in there. Yeah? Yeah. Same. Yeah. But, you know, I tend to overthink things sometimes. Oh, yeah? What are you, you know? overthinking about? I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's uh, one of the high things you do, but... Oh, overthinking is like a common personality trait of me and my friends i don't know there's some people who don't out there i just took a swig of seltzer it's getting me all hiccupy right now Mm. my bad yeah are there people who don't overthink i know there's people who don't have inner monologues they don't overthink i think to the level that we may Mm. but it like it gets down to the punctuation like granular type of overthinking in my case when you're talking to a boy honestly to anybody I'm like, does this period mean I'm getting fired in this meeting? Right. No, I get like that too, especially if it's a Slack message. The period and then the three dots is the worst. The worst. That's a boomer classic. Yeah. That it's a boomer classic. And I definitely feel that I need to overcompensate and I'll add exclamation points to everything. Me too. And And it's seen as a sign of weakness, I think. But then they'll meet me in person and they're like, wait, you are... A goth. <laughs> like, like, where did that go, bro? You have no emotion except darkness. Like, yeah. what's going on? Where's all the exclamation points? Yeah, there's a little bit of a miss. My email personality, very different from my... 100%. Actual personality. What's your, what's your uh, like, signature, signature sign-off? All the best. You? All the best, Sarah? Mm-hmm. Mine, I've done this for years. Or best. Is XX Natasha. Love. There's sometimes where that's inappropriate. If I'm working with a very corporate client, I can't put. Access. But I like I like break breaking that like wall. The decorum, you mean yeah. breaking the decorum? Wow. Yeah, I can't. And I've seen some of these like Gen Z sign offs, like worst. You I know. know and, like it's I'd, funny. like I'm like this is cute and funny, but I couldn't be me. I feel like in weed, it's already like we're barely taken seriously already seen too casually yeah that's why the xx is cute because it's like endearing and like it kind of brings a closeness which i try to overcompensate once more because i struggle with being warm in person okay i see but digitally i can be extremely warm well i guess that's how brands are built exactly that's why i'm an excellent marketer and a very weird person (laughs) (laughs) the two go hand in hand i know like i have no friends but a lot of digital ones (laughs) yes exactly um yeah all right so in terms of dating what is something that's had you like what's a text that has sank your heart punctuation wise i don't know we need to talk is the classic. That's the worst. Or we should talk or I have something to talk to you about. But is it worse if it's a period or no punctuation with like the we should talk? Um, If it's no punctuation, that's probably the worst. Really? Yeah. I feel like they're not even finishing their thought or sentence. They just need to get to the point. Wow. It's like, okay, what is it? At that point, I'm I'm probably calling you back immediately. I hate the can I call you. I like that. You know what? I had a boss, well, boss. I had a client the other day who wrote something to me and they they sent it in a private message, which was already sus. Yeah. They were like, do you have a few minutes to hop on a quick call? And normally I would be panicking. Yeah. But they wrote in parentheses, nothing serious i just want to touch base really quick i do that a lot i that clarification means everything to my day i do that a lot i won't put the meeting off i'll go in with ideas i'll go in like not stressed about what i think you could be talking to me about but more like prepared to be a proactive member of the team and like if i text you can i call you i'll usually follow up with a text like about about blah 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 blah. but then my dad will do the like most boomer thing and he'll just be like can i call you obviously won't answer the phone when i try to call him back my mom and i'm like did somebody die who's dying right who's dead just get to the point right now because you obviously think it's something you it's too sensitive to send over text it's you know so like get to the point of course i dropped the filter of course thank you so much that's what friends are for um yeah it freaks me out 
I hate texting in general. I feel like I'm an overthinker. Yeah. In general. And I read a lot into the subtext. I feel like I do this less now because I'm not I'm like older and it's less giddy and dumb. But I feel like there was such an era of like, oh, did he say see you later or see you soon? Right. Oh, I don't know if that means he's going to hang out with you next weekend. Or this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was like, it used so, to be really deep. It was like, oh, he didn't, he, like, again, the punctuation. Right. Like, he what's He wasn't up? enthusiastic. There was an exclamation point or question mark or no punctuation. Right. Or was it the W-Y-D? Oh, God. Which is like, if they're sending that to you. I'm sorry, but... If it's my birthday and you give me a HBD, don't wish it. I would just rather not. Don't wish it. Like, you don't mean it, so don't say it. You're not obligated to say it. I won't hold a grudge against you if you don't tell me happy birthday unless you are my father or my boyfriend or my mother or my sister. So, like, a lot of people. My immediate family... <laughs> You're like, and let me just name five people. My immediate family and my partner. Yeah. Yeah. If friends forget, I understand. You know, there's some friends I forget sometimes just because it's a lot of, I have a lot of friends, you know. It's a lot of dates to keep in my head, but yeah. I don't know. You can't hold it over people's heads. But if they are saying happy birthday, you uh, you gotta say it. <laughs> Did you hear my throat? <laughs> the involuntary burp? <sighs> Embarrassing. Yeah. I think what's more toxic, a happy birthday message or a happy New Year's message? Happy New Year. Because if it's I don't someone, know. it's pretty toxic. I think on people's birthday, you have a free pass to tell them happy birthday. It's almost like a way. It is, I would say, the rule for getting back into someone's life is to tell them happy say, birthday. If you're trying to like tap an ex, you have to hit them on their birthday. If There's you no hit other them time. On their birthday, it's almost a done deal. No, I don't think so. I think if you hit them on their birthday, you get a pass for shooting your shot because you're genuinely wishing them a happy day and you're thinking about them on their birthday. But Happy New Year gives a why am I crying in the club vibe. Yeah, but it could also be like a I'm thinking of you vibe. Yeah, but that's too direct. You know what I'm saying? Birthday is like I wish you well. Yeah. If, you know, we'll leave the communication open. You're getting hit up from hundreds of people because it's your day. So if you have time to hit me back and you're interested, we can continue the convo. If not, we can dead it right here at Happy Birthday. What about the Happy Thanksgiving? It's the same category as New Year's Eve. It's like you're with your family slash partner. If not, you're in your hometown and you're feeling desperado. Yeah. That's usually what that gives. I think the happy July 4th might be the most desperate. <laughs> Did you say happy Martin Luther King Jr. No, Day? July. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me and my friends when I was in college, we had a joke. There was this one professor that we had our freshman year. And like all the way until our like senior year, she was sending out newsletters that would be like, you're a former student of mine. So we would be like, we would always say like, we're expecting like a Martin Luther King Jr. newsletter from yeah. her. That's like. I was just, she would always say, like, I'm just thinking about you guys, blah, 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 blah. And it was sweet in mm -hmm. hindsight. And we were kind of assholes to be like, we hear from her on every holiday. But it was just really funny. Maybe it was like her way of, you know. Nudging. We remembered her. Exactly. You know, I, I'm talking about her right now. So she must have done something with it. Exactly. And she was a philosophy professor. So that was really interesting. So she was definitely playing you guys. Mentally. Um, Socrates of our time. <laughs> Socrates of all right. What's up? It's time we talk about Siri. Let's get serious about Siri. I wonder how many people's phones are going to start recording in this studio uh -oh. right now. It's time to get serious about Siri. Or as my friend used to call her, Seer bitch. <laughs> because she just is useless. She's so useless. She's completely useless. Yeah. I would say that's the one feature that I'm just like, just pack it up. Like, it doesn't... We don't need it. But it's so interesting because I feel like our generation feels that way, but our parents do not feel that way. My my mom talks to Siri 30 times a day, minimum. Um, 
my dad thinks it's like a fun game to talk to Siri and send messages, like text messages to us via Siri, except he'll only speak to Siri in French, who doesn't understand, obviously. Is there no French setting? I don't know. We haven't figured it out. And so it just like sends these like crazy jumbled messages and he thinks it's the funniest thing ever. Oh my God. And it hasn't gotten old to him yet. It really hasn't. And then my <laughs> sister will send me texts on the side being like, are you in the car with dad? Can you really tell him to stop with the Siri? Like- <laughs> my mom, I'm with her and I'll at, we'll like pose a question that's like a thought, like just a thought piece. We're like, you know, have you guys heard about this senator or this, you know, whatever is in the news? And my mom will say, hey, Siri, can you tell me like she'll st- add that's- so many unnecessary words to begin with. I'm like, mom, you don't have to say, hey, Siri, you could just press it. Or you know what I'm saying? Like, I try to reduce. It's like putting www before a website. Like, it's she always is like, hey, Siri. And then like waits for her to like hear her. And then we'll start talking. And I'm like, I've Googled it and found the answer already before you even got your question out. Yeah, I've never used it to like ask questions. My mom acts like Siri is in her friend group. I love that. It's a lot. There's actually, there was a study back in the day about how because Siri is a woman and like Alexa is a woman's voice and all these things, it changes the way people treat it. And they, the study was showing that people speak more condescendingly and like very commandy, commanding um, because it's a woman's voice. That's really intriguing. Isn't that intriguing? And yeah. it's true because we treat her like a dumb bitch. We do. We call her seer bitch. You know? She is a dumb bitch though for like, but it's to be so fair. funny. But the- I think, you know, I definitely scream at male voices as well. Yeah. In fact, I think I'm more likely to scream at a man. <laughs> but it's, it's really endearing and like wholesome to see the joy that our parents generation get from siri yeah no i love it they like, love it it's i pick just, on my mom about it but like i think it's actually really cute it's really cute it's just like for them that's like just such a big innovation innovation and they think it's so cool they can like dictate while driving they're like this meanwhile awesome. we're like we grew up on smarter child yeah i'm like <laughs> smarter child what a i don't think i've ever what is this Did you use AOL Instant Messenger? Yeah. You were not friends with Smarter Child? What's that? It was like one of the original buddies you could have. You added Smarter Child as a friend and he would have conversations with you. He was like the first like AI bot. Oh no. He you could when none of your friends were online, you could always hit up Smarter Child and say, "Hey Smarter Child, what's up?" They would write back, you could ask it questions. I had no idea. It was like the OG Siri. Okay, well, let us know if you have Chit chatted with smarter child. Yeah, because <laughs> I've never heard of this, but this That's is crazy. crazy. Yo, sometimes well, our age difference makes sense. It's like three critical years. Critical you know? years. Yeah, and I was also not really allowed to use like the internet and stuff. So I would be at the library. Yeah, like interneting it up. I loved the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web was truly it An changed ocean everything. Of possibility. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> I know in like a previous episode we talked about. Like our celebrity dream and nightmare blunt rotations. Yeah. But I think we need to circle back on the celeb beat for a minute. And we need to call out the pick me celebrities. Okay. Do you know any pick me's? I mean, the one that you mentioned earlier, you just like you hit it so spot on. Yeah. That, please let everybody know. And this is Contro Versial. But... <laughs> James Corden is a pick me. It's just like it's so much for everybody. Pick me to any celeb. He wants the celebs to pick him. Yeah. So I would put him in the category. It's not the conventional use of the term pick me, but I'd put James in the category. I feel like Jared Leto has been giving that bi- vibe recently. Oh, that's that's true. You know, on that beat, I will say John Pete. Mayer. Oh yeah, Pete Davidson. I was gonna go Emrata. All of them. Yeah. Like that Pick whole me's. new generation of celebrity socialites. Yeah. Hate to say it. I hope we don't get canceled for the Emrata slander, but she's a bit of a pick me. Yeah, but so is a lot of the people out there. Yeah. What do you, do you think the Kardashians? No, I think that people want to be picked by them. Yeah, but I think the Jenners 
or pick me. Kendall has slightly pick me energy. So does Kylie. <laughs> oh, controversial. <laughs> but I respect. You know, those are my girls. <laughs> no, and like, you know, you do you, whatever. But I do think there's like an energy of like. And I will say Courtney is pick me punk rock. Punk rock pick me. Yeah. Like everybody just needs to relax and smoke more weed and be nicer. Us included. <laughs> Us included. I'm definitely an asshole. The first to call Sorry, out. you're a celebrity and you make more money than us, so we'll call you pick me if we want to. Pick us. <laughs> All right. So, like, you know, this is a marketing question. Yeah. Growing up, we drank a number of Arizona iced teas. We drank a number of Snapples as yeah. well. Ugh. And in the 90s and 2000, maybe it started in the 2000s, Snap, when Snapple Facts rolled out. Let me check. Like, I remember this being the holy grail conversation starter for people. In hindsight, brilliant on their part. I'm sure people bought Snapples to read the Snapple Facts. I'm sure people collected. 2002. 2002. So it was just what we needed after a rough yeah. 9-11. You know, we needed, we needed some fact. We needed to, it was fighting disinformation. But was it? We need to talk about what the false Snapple facts have done to society. Why would you put out fake information? I think more than half the Snapple facts are incorrect. Is that true? More than know, half? I don't know if it's more than half, but I know that it's a lot. There's a significant portion of untrue Snapple facts. Yeah. How dare you call something a fact if it's not a fact? I think that's wrong. I really think that's wrong. Sorry. I mean, I agree, but I also kind of love the fact that um, they just like have people going around who like have learned stuff from them that is just completely false. I don't think that's right. I think they've set the world back a few years. Agreed, but didn't they collectively? Did they stop doing Snapple facts? I don't know if they've stopped. I think they're still there. But also, remember when Snapple was in a glass bottle? Yeah, when it was better. I don't drink Snapple anymore. Me neither. It was good though. It was so good when it was in glass. And I'll be honest, those glasses were never. First of all, what company decides after how X amount of years being glass, among world pressure? To stop plastic consumption, we're switching to plastic. What is Snapple Elements? Oh, those were like the like air, fire, water, like the elements. I have a vague memory of that. I don't know if I've ever purchased or drank one of those, though. I can't say I have either. I'm a lemon or peach Snapple yeah, girl. Yeah, agreed. Sometimes the strawberry kiwi. Oh, that was like fun for a moment. Yeah, for a but moment. But I'll never like no. get that. Um... But it was definitely associated. I don't like the raspberry. No, my mom does. Mine too. My, my mom, mom loves raspberry. What is that? What is that? Raspberry's mid. It's weird. Mid. Um, but speaking of Snapple, I personally believe kids who liked Snapple and Arizona iced tea growing up, and especially in like their teen years, those were kind of like early signs that we were going to become stoners. Did that predispose us to become stoner stoners or like because why? Because I feel like it's palate quenching. I feel because like we, had we were mouth. I feel like we were always meant to be stoners, but we found an affinity to these things very early. Very true. Well, we were young seltzer drinkers too, so maybe that too. You know, it was either we become alcoholics or become Cali sober for life. And I feel like, what else do you, what would you say, like, you have a friend who has kids and they do start, I? no, I'm, oh. I'm saying, imagine you have a friend who has kids and <laughs> they like, can't imagine that <laughs> and they start telling you about what their kid's doing. What are some like signs that you're like, damn, that kid's a hundred going to be a stoner? 100%. I think if the kid like really values their like alone time, even if they're not an introvert, if they're like a kid who just wants to get like lost in their bedroom or their like space, even if it's like a tent, if they don't yeah. have their own room, like I think those kids are always like they just want to be like off in their mind a little bit, like creating or doing something else, you know. So I would say like that sacred alone time is like 
the lonely stoner likes to free his mind at night. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That kind of vibe. Like, And I would, on that note, say, like, when a kid starts getting into classic rock. And, oh, yeah. And, like, starts dipping their toes into the jam band category, they are 100% going to become a stoner. Yeah. And they're stealing your beer as well, probably. Like, if they're listening to Pink Floyd in Pink their Floyd, bedroom 100%. at night, your kid's smoking weed. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I feel like those are some signs. If your kid's coming home or teen or honestly young adult, I feel like not to can, snitch, but not to snitch. <laughs> but if your kid's wearing like oversized hoodies that they found at their friend's spot, tie dye, they smell like Febreze. They're wearing Adidas <laughs> slides with socks yeah. more than shoes. They're wearing flannels open like that, like yeah. a jacket. Yeah, that's true. The flannel was a big one. They that start, was a big sign. They start wearing sunglasses on all hours of the day. They start teasing their hair into a raccoon tail. Or oh, that was just me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like the classic rock was a big one. Getting into movies like Rick and Morty, oh, like TV God. shows, BoJack Horseman, like all of these kind of like satirical animation. Yeah, like mature kind of apathetic I feel humor. Like, yeah, once I started reading like Freud... As like a high school kid, I was wow, like, "Are you reading Freud in high school?" Yeah, I was being just like a douche. I like was an like, "Edge Lord." I'm just so cultured. Wow, that was very Edge Lord of you. <laughs> that was stoner pick me of you. <laughs> <laughs> I could yeah. not agree more. Yeah, I definitely. I think I'm journaling. Annoying. I think people who journal, yeah. who are like kids who sh are showing signs of early mindfulness. You know what I'm saying? Like stoner. For me, I think. I think I was in high school and I started reading Ram Das. <laughs> Stoner. So why like, are you calling me a fucking like? No, it definitely a, a Wook and training like early Stoner pick me, you know. Yeah. But like actually, just like a you know adapting to the culture. Wait, this is the tell-all sign. Drug rugs. Oh my god! I was about to say drug rugs! <laughs> no way! If your kid comes home with a poncho vibe drug rug, yeah. <laughs> And they just screamed so loud. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was literally That's crazy. That. that was a brain blast. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, the drug rug, that was big. And then I, it's hilarious to think now. I was like, yeah, my parents had no idea. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> no clue. But, I mean, destigmatized, but. Also, responsible you know what was a fun? Well, I'm oh, sorry. A fun sign that was easy to hide when you were like an emo kid was like having a lighter. Like having a the lighter. Because you could be like, it's for my eyeliner. Or I would just say that it was like my friend's birthday and we had candles. Oh, smart. I didn't think about that one. I would put it in my makeup kit and it would be like because Same. like you would light your lighter and on your eyeliner and it would make it like smudgy, like yeah. liquidy. So that was like a very good excuse for always having a lighter. That's smart. Yeah. I was also, it's so weird. I was in high school when vapes like began. Yeah. Did you, were you in like middle school? Yeah, but vapes were not a thing really at my school. Wow. Surprising. I mean, especially because people were French and like, I feel like. Yeah. So we just smoked cigarettes. Oh, wow. I yeah. guess. Yeah. So vapes were like starting and like yeah. as like a kid who smoked. I began vaping early, but it was like the original vapes that were only at like 7 Eleven. Yeah. And I had to have like an older friend like yeah. buy me a whole setup, and there was like no way to like replace the cartridges yeah. or anything. But it was like so revolutionary. Like being the blue able, cigarette or whatever. Literally. Yeah. There was no other way to like smoke indoors. So that was really yeah. revolutionary. That changed like the kids, everything. The kids now, I would say, if they're like, puffing on an elf bar they're probably some kind of stoner as well you think i think so i think like if you're because the kids right I, i'll be honest like i don't feel like kids right now are as like bad or edgy as like we were yeah we were like smoking like k2 and salvia from the like same so much smoke salvia. Shop. exactly it's i wonder what all that did to us <laughs> I mean, I know it like killed a lot of brain cells. Yeah, I just wonder if it like created like irreversible like lung lung damage as well. Like, look at us now; we're doing a fucking podcast. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> this is what worse, happens. It turns you into a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> the true dangers of spice. <laughs> yeah, 
bad times. <laughs> bad times, but so many great times ahead. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> and it's really cool to see, for example, not to like put my family on blast like this, but being able to show people <coughs> from Europe new and innovative cannabis products and cannabis methods of consumption true was so cool that is the best because they it's it feels like so advanced here in california yeah i forget about it and even in new york it's pretty advanced but it's still not as like innovative in a sense Mm -hmm. but like europe is like not there yeah they're in a totally different field they're barely on the like flower extracts game it's funny because when my friends come to my house, I'm not even like thinking about stuff and I'm just like, oh, you want to take a dab? And like, I'll hand them something and they'll be like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, uh, and they're like, you have the coolest tools. And I'm like, what? Like, I wasn't even considering that. Exactly. This, it was cool. It's I, pretty crazy. I wanted you to get nerdy with me about the terps on the dabs, you know, but like, it's it's really fun. It is so fun having that, like, that part. big cis energy with that. That's fun. Weed boomers, mm-hmm. just educating. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you staring at me? <laughs> no, I'm just... <sighs> <sighs> All right. Draw at your favorite pick me celebs so yes. that we can fight with them in the comments section. Um, tell Emrata we want her on the show. Would be nice. I yeah, I don't think we need to be doing that kind of call outs. Oh well, I mean, (laughs) I was gonna make amends anyway. Um, tell us the worst Snapple fact that like remained in your head, and let's figure out if it's true or false. I'll follow up with a few, and I'll say like, yeah, true or false. And like, if you have a kid and they're exhibiting signs of early stonerhood, being kind of like us, tell us what those tips are. What are they showing? Don't worry. It'll be okay. Yeah, we won't drag them. Um, But don't forget to give us a follow at Not For Nothing Pod on all platforms. You you can follow me at How Can I Help You? Where can they find you? And you can find me at Natasha PRZ. All right. Rate us five stars and we'll love you forever. See you later. Bye. (laughs) 